Hey guys, this is Caleb with the Command Valley bringing you another deck tech out of Kaldheim. I'd like to take a quick second to thank this channel's sponsor, Game Grid Lehigh. You can check out their new and improved online store and support our channel while doing so by clicking the link to their website in the description below. We also have a deck list in the description that you can copy and paste right into their deck builder to buy any of the cards that you see in this video. To support the channel directly, head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash commandvalley to sign up today. With that out of the way, we will be diving into Asika, God of the Tree from the new Kaldheim set. Asika, God of the Tree, costs 1 and 2 green. She's a 1-4 legendary creature god that has vigilance, and you can tap her to add 1 mana of any color to your mana pool. And she also says other legendary creatures you control have vigilance and tap add 1 mana of any color. And like all the other gods in the set, she is a modal dual-faced card, and on the other side, she is the Prismatic Bridge that costs Wooburg, or white, blue, black, red, and a green to cast. And it's a legendary enchantment that says, at the beginning of your upkeep, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature or planeswalker card. Put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in random order. So this deck was a little tough for me to build because uh, most of the decks that I've seen people building have been either God Tribal or Super Friends, and I don't really think that Asika, God of the Tree, is the God Tribal Commander that we've all been waiting for, so... And honestly, I don't really want to focus too much on the Prismatic Bridge either. When I see Asika, I really feel like her front side has the most potential and sounds the most fun to play. So sorry if you're here for God Tribal because that's not what I'm building and I'm also not doing Super Friends. But if you were hoping to see something about focusing on the Prismatic Bridge, don't worry, towards the end of the video I will talk about a package of cards that I would include were I wanting to focus more on her second side. So the way that I have built this deck is 100% Legends Tribal. Every single creature in this deck is legendary. But before we dive into the meat of the deck, which is all of our legends, let's talk about some of the essentials. So obviously, since every single one of our creatures is legendary in this deck, Asika is going to turn all of our creatures into mana dorks. So there's not a huge ramp package beside that because we're going to be heavily relying on her. But the few cards that I have included are Mox Amber, Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Far Seek, Nature's Lore, Three Visits, and Cultivate. I haven't played or tested this deck quite yet, so the number of ramp cards in this deck may or may not go up or down in the near future, but for now, I'm just including those seven cards, and like I said, hoping for Asika to provide the rest of the ramp required for this deck. Next, let's talk about cards that draw us more cards. Nyambi, Esteemed Speaker, is a 2-1 legendary creature that costs a white and a blue to cast. She has Flash, and when she enters the battlefield, you may return another target creature you control to its owner's hand. And if you do, you gain life equal to that creature's converted mana cost. So this is a good way to protect creature that maybe somebody is trying to sorts to plowshares, or if you want to return a Sika to your hand and then cast the Prismatic Bridge side instead, you can do that as well. But she has a second ability that says pay one, a white, and a blue, tap her, then discard a legendary card, and draw two cards. There are going to be some really high-costed CMC cards in this deck that are legendary, and so if you get stuck with those in the early game and you're like, ah, oh. and if you just really need some extra card draw, Nyambi is a good way to get rid of those huge legendary creatures to draw the cards that you need. Next, I've got Pull From Tomorrow and Blue Sun's Zenith, which are both instant blue spells that have X in their cost and draw you a ton of cards depending on what you pay for X. And the reason these cards are so good is because like Asika, who has Vigilance and can tap for mana, all of our creatures are going to be able to do the same thing, which means that we can go to combat, swing out, and then we can hold up all of our mana from our creatures until right before our turn, 
or until our second main phase. Whenever you want to cast these cards, you're going to be able to tap all of your creatures and all of your land and just pump a ton of mana into these and draw a ton of cards. Next, we've got Edric Spymaster of Trest and Toski Bearer of Secrets. Edric Spymaster of Trest that costs one, a green, and a blue, and he's a 2-2 legendary creature elf rogue that says, whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents, its controller may draw a card. So this is good because that means anytime that any of your creatures deal damage to your opponents, you're going to draw a card. And this also incentivizes other players to swing out at each other instead of you. This is an oldie, but definitely a goodie. And this is exactly what we want in our deck. And then very similar to Edric, we have Toski, Bearer of Secrets from Kaldheim. He costs three and a green. He's a one, one. So, so far not very good, but he says this spell can't be countered. He's indestructible, and Toski Bearer of Secrets attacks each combat if able. Then the good part, whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Next up, we've got Reki, the History of Kamigawa, and Joyra, Weatherlight Captain, that will both draw you a card whenever you play a legendary spell in the case of Reki and a historic spell in the case of Joyra. And just a quick reminder, historic spells are artifacts, legendaries, and sagas. Next, we've got Guardian Project that is an enchantment for three and a green and it basically says whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control you draw a card. Next we've got one of my favorite pet cards and it is Dragon Lord Ojitai. For three, a white and a blue, you get a 5-4 legendary creature Elder Dragon that has flying and it has hexproof as long as it's untapped. And then it says whenever Dragon Lord Ojitai deals combat damage to a player, look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order, or in other words, anticipate. And thanks to Asika giving him Vigilance, he is only ever going to be tapped when you tap him for mana, which is fantastic. Last but not least, we are including AC Tyrant of Gyre Strait. AC is a 5-5 that costs 4, a green, and a blue. It's a legendary creature serpent, and it says, You may play an additional land on each of your turns. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. This card is absolutely nuts. If you haven't seen our gameplay video where we played this new commander, definitely check it out. AC is an absolute powerhouse. You will not regret putting this in your deck. Next up, let's talk about some interaction that we've included in the deck. As far as board wipes go, we are only including two, and those are Cyclonic Rift, which needs no explanation or introduction, and Urza's Ruinous Blast, which costs four and a white. It's a legendary sorcery. It's important to note that you may cast a legendary sorcery only if you control a legendary creature or planeswalker. But when you do get to cast this, which shouldn't be a problem in this deck, you exile all non-land permanents that are not legendary. The creatures in this deck are going to be a super important part to our strategy, so we really don't want to include board wipes that also wipe our side of the board, which is why I've chosen to include only these two. You may or may not want to include more board wipes depending on your meta or your play group, but I would suggest going with some one-sided board wipes, even if they're more expensive to cast like in Garrick's Wake, just so that you can make sure you keep all of your creatures. Continuing in our interaction section of the deck, I've included Nature's Claim that costs one green to cast. It's an instant that destroys target artifact or enchantment, and its controller gains four life. Along the same lines, we've got Path to Exile and Swords to Plowshares, which can exile a creature for one white at instant speed. We've got Swan Song that can counter an enchantment, an instant, or a sorcery spell, and then its controller puts a 2 2 bird into play. I've also included Arcane Denial and Counter Spell that are perfect for dealing with anything that you need to deal with in the moment. And last but not least, we've got Assassin's Trophy that costs a black and a green. It's an instant that destroys target permanent and opponent controls, and then its controller may search their library for basic land and put it onto the battlefield tapped. So as you can see, I've tried to keep the interaction 
really cheap so that we can tap out with our lands during our turn and then keep our creatures untapped and then use them to pay for these types of interaction on other people's turns. Next up, let's talk about some protection to keep our creatures alive and well. Let's start off with Heroic Intervention that costs one and a green. It's an instant that gives all of your permanents hexproof and indestructible for a turn. I'm also running Lightning Greaves, which costs two to cast and zero to equip, and Equip Creature gets Haste and Shroud. Next, I've included Lin Vala, Shield of Seagate, which costs one, a white, and a blue for a 3-3 legendary creature, Angel Wizard. She is from the new Zendikar Rising set. She has flying, a paragraph of flavor text that we're not going to read or worry about. And then she says, sacrifice Linvala, choose hexproof or indestructible. Creatures you control gain that ability until end of turn. A 3-3 flyer for three is awesome. She's legendary, so she is also a mana dork in this deck and she can be sacrificed to instant speed to save our entire board if we need her to. She is a fantastic include in this deck. Next up we've got Gerard Weatherlight Hero that costs two a red and a white for a 3-3 with first strike and when he dies you exile him and then return all of your artifacts and creature cards in your graveyard that were put there from your battlefield the same turn that he dies. Again this is another great way to Protect all of your stuff from a Wrath of God or a Damnation by simply returning all of your stuff to the battlefield. In a similar vein, we've got Marchesa, the Black Rose, which costs one, a blue, a black, and a red. She's a 3-3 legendary human wizard with the ability Dethrone. Dethrone says whenever this creature attacks, the player with the most life or tied for the most life put a plus one plus one counter on it. Then she gives all of our other creatures dethrone. So every single time they attack, the player with the highest life, they're going to get buffed, which is awesome. And then whenever a creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it dies, return that card to the battlefield under your control at the beginning of the next end step. This is a great way of letting us swing at most likely the player who is winning if they've got the most life. And if not, just do it anyway if you're expecting a Wrath or a board wipe from another player so that you can keep all of your legendary creatures out. Shalai Voice of Plenty costs three and a white. She's a three, four flyer that gives you your planeswalkers and other creatures hexproof. Last but not least, we've got Surak Dragon Claw that costs two, a green, a blue, and a red. He's a six, six with flash. You can't be countered and creature spells you control can't be countered and other creatures you control have trample. Sirok is awesome in this deck. Not only does he protect our creatures from being countered, but he also gives them trample and a 6-6 six, six for 5 mana is so good. I just wish that he also had trample, but he can tap for mana in this deck and he's going to have vigilance. So all around a fantastic card. Moving on to the meat of our deck, let's talk about a few legendary creatures that we can cast before getting a Sika out. Uh, it's really good to have some creatures that cost one or only two mana so that by the time you're casting a Sika, you already have some extra ramp for the very next turn or even right then and there. I don't have a lot that cost less than three, but the ones that I've included are also really helpful. So we've got Hope of Giraper. Kithian, Hero of Akros, Amara, Soul of the Accord, which is super good because she's going to tap as a mana dork in this deck, and when she does, she'll create us a 1-1 white soldier creature token with lifelink. And Jace, Vrin's Prodigy, which we can also use as a looting effect, and he flips into a really good planeswalker, same as Kithian. Next, let's talk about some legendary synergy in the deck. We've got Two equipments, Black Blade Reforged and Hero's Blade, that are perfect for a deck with only legendary creatures. Black Blade Reforged costs two to cast and three to equip to a legendary creature, and it gives the equipped creature plus one plus one for each land you control. So we're gonna make some super buff legendary creature. Hero's Blade costs two to cast as well, and the equipped creature will get plus three plus two, and whenever a legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control, you can attach Hero's Blade to it for free. 
The equip cost of four is pretty costly, but since we're going to be casting only legendary creatures, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. And plus three plus two is an insanely good buff not to be trifled with. Time of Need is a sorcery that costs one and a green that lets you search your library for a legendary creature card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. So essentially this is your green demonic tutor in this deck that costs way way less to buy but of course it can only grab one of your creatures as i mentioned before we're going to have a lot of mana that we can pump into spells with x costs such as kamal's druidic vow which costs x and two green again this is a legendary sorcery so you can only cast it if you control a legendary creature or planeswalker but when you do cast it you get to look at the top x cards of your library then you can put any number of lands and or legendary permanent cards with converted mana cost X or less from among them onto the battlefield. Yeah, that's onto the battlefield. Not into your hand, not on the bottom of your library. They go onto the battlefield, which is awesome. And then you put the rest into your graveyard. And that's awesome because we've got cards like Kethys, the Hidden Hand, that costs a white, a black, and a green for a 3-4 legendary elf advisor, which first says legendary spells you cast cost one less to cast. And then you can also exile two legendary cards from your graveyard. And then until end of turn, each legendary card in your graveyard gains. You may play this card from your graveyard. Just remember that you do have to pay for it to play it, but this essentially lets you in the late game cast whatever you want from your graveyard as long as you have multiple creatures in there. If you need to get something specific back, he makes it really easy to do that. Next we've got Sisse, Weatherlight Captain that costs two and a white. She's a two two and she gets plus one plus one for each color among other legendary permanents that you control. You can also pay Wooburg and search your library for a legendary permanent card with converted mana cost less than Sisse's power and put that card straight onto the battlefield. We'll talk about which card you're definitely going to want to search up with her very first in this deck, but this is a fantastic ability for grabbing whatever legendary creature you need at any time. And her counterpart, Captain Sisse, costs two a green and a white, and she can tap to search for any legendary card, reveal it, and then put it into your hand. Next up, we've got Kolvori, God of Kinship, that costs two and two green for a two four legendary creature god as long as you control three or more legendary creatures she gets plus four plus two and has vigilance which she'll already have from asika but she can also tap pay one and a green and then you can look at the top six cards of your library reveal a legendary creature from among them and put it into your hand then you put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order, and like the rest of the gods in the set, she is a modal dual face card, and on the other side is essentially just a mana rock for our legendary creature spells. Teshar, Ancestor's Apostle, is a 2-2 flyer that says whenever you cast a historic spell, so artifacts, legendaries, or sagas, you can return target creature with converted mana cost 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Arvad the Cursed is a 3-3 with Death Touch and Life Link, and he also buffs our other legendary creatures by giving them plus two, plus two. Going back to the fact that Asika is going to give all of our creatures vigilance and turn them into mana dorks, a really powerful effect in this deck is giving our creature spells or other spells flash. So I've included Vivian, Champion of the Wilds, which is a Planeswalker that comes into play with four loyalty counters. She costs two and a green, and she says you may cast creature spells as though they had flash, and her other two abilities are relevant as well. Raf Capuchin is one of my absolute favorite cards. He costs two, a white, and a blue. He's a 3-3 three, three human wizard, and he's got flash himself flying, and he says you may cast historic spells as though they had flash. And then we've got Vidalkin Ori, which costs four. It's an artifact that says you may cast non-land cards as though they had flash. Again, giving all of our stuff flash is super powerful thanks to Asika's ability to give all of our creatures vigilance and turn them into mana dorks. You're going to be able to cast whatever you want, whenever you need to, and that is just an absolutely fantastic feeling. There is a reason that Vidalkin Ori is so expensive. These are really good cards, and I would definitely include all three of these in the deck. 
All right, it is time to talk about our payoffs and our win cons. The very first one that I want to talk about is also the one that I am the most excited about, and that is Najila the Blade Blossom. She costs two and a red. She's a 3-2 legendary creature human warrior. She says, whenever a warrior attacks, you may have its controller create a 1-1 white warrior creature token that's tapped and attacking. Her second ability says you can pay Wooberg, then untap all attacking creatures. They gain Trample, Lifelink, and Haste until end of turn. After this phase, there is an additional combat phase. Activate this ability only during combat. So the way that we're going to use this ability is go to combat, have her and four other legendary creatures declare attacks. All of our legendary creatures have Vigilance thanks to Asika and they all tap for mana. So as long as you have five of them, after you attack, you can pay Wooberg, tapping them down, then activating this ability to untap those creatures, give them Trample, Lifelink, and Haste, and then you get to do it again. Then you get to do it again, and again, and again, until all of your opponents are dead. So yes, this goes infinite, especially with a card called Avacyn, Angel of Hope, which I'm sure you've heard of. She's an 8-8 that costs five and three white. She's flying and vigilance, but more importantly, she and all of your other permanents are indestructible thanks to her. So if Avacyn is one of those other four legendary creatures that you need out on the battlefield, this is going to allow you to swing with Najila and your other creatures, create more and more warriors every single time you attack, and you can just keep going without having to worry about your creatures dying due to combat damage, so you can for sure pay that Wooberg every single extra combat. I am super excited to play Najila in this deck, and there's also one other card that can help us go infinite with her, as long as we have enough legendary creatures out, and that is the brand new card, Akroma's Will which is a white instant that costs three and a white to cast. It says, choose one. If you control a commander as you cast this spell, you may choose both. And the options are creatures you control gain flying, vigilance, and double strike until end of turn. And option two is creatures you control gain lifelink, indestructible, and protection from all colors until end of turn. This card plus Najila plus three other legendaries plus Asika equals you win the game. So. I'm super excited for this combo. I absolutely love Najila. These are great cards for this deck. Next up, we've got a really good creature to pump all of that mana that we've been talking about into with Golos Tireless Pilgrim that costs five for a three five. When he enters the battlefield, you can search your library for a land card and put it onto the battlefield tapped. Then you shuffle your library. Then you can pay two and Wooberg to exile the top three cards of your library and you may play them this turn without paying their mana costs. Let's keep going so that you can see a few of the things you just might hit with Golos. We've also got Kenrith, the Return King, that costs four and a white, and he is a five five. And if you want, you can pause the video and read all of these abilities. He's got a bunch of them, and you're gonna be able to use them. It's a great place to put your mana. Next up, we've got Kamal, Fist of Krosa, one of my absolute favorite cards. This is one of the best things about playing a five color deck is you get to put all your favorite cards into it. And Kamal is super good in this deck. He costs four and two green. He's a four three and he has two abilities. The first one is you can pay a green and target land becomes a one one creature until end of turn. It's still a land. This is here for political purposes. All of your creatures are able to tap for green. You're sure to have some lands that tap for green. And with Kamal out, if one of your opponents is threatening a Wrath of God or a Damnation, well, guess what? You get to turn all of their lands into creatures that die to their own Wraths. This is a super great way to protect all of your creatures, threaten a horrible retaliation against any player that would even dare think about destroying your whole board. And then you can also just use him as a win con. You pay two and three green and creatures you control get plus three plus three and gain trample until end of turn. Again, just like Najila, you can activate this after already going to combat and declaring all of your attackers. So you can actually use those creatures that are already attacking to pay for this ability to give them plus three plus three and trample. Then we've got Gisela, Blade of Gold Knight, that is a 5-5 angel with flying and first strike. And essentially, she makes it so that any damage that would be dealt to your opponents or things that they control is doubled, including whatever they deal to each other. But if a source would deal damage to you or any of your permanents, it's halved. 
This card has won me many games over the years. Koma Cosmo Serpent is an absolutely ridiculous card from the new set. I'm sure you've checked it out recently, and if you haven't, you should play it. I'm super excited too. Vorinclex, Voice of Hunger, is not the Vorinclex from the new set, but the old one. He's a 7-6 with Trample that essentially doubles your mana and says whenever an opponent taps a land for mana, that land doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. So basically it takes two turns for their stuff to untap, and your stuff taps for twice as much. So he's awesome. You'll lose friends over him, but he'll win you the game. And then we've got Expropriate for seven and two blue. It's a sorcery that basically lets you get an extra turn and then steal a permanent from each of your opponents unless they want to give you another extra turn, which they shouldn't. Don't give people extra turns with Expropriate. But if they do, it's awesome. Last but not least, we've got Zakama Primal Calamity that costs six, a red, a green, and a white. It's a 9-9 legendary creature, elder dinosaur with vigilance, reach, trample, and then when it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, you untap all your lands you control. So you get to basically, most likely, usually, cast it for almost free, and then use that mana to activate one of its other three abilities, which are all fantastic. On to the mana base. I am running a total of 37 lands in this deck. I'm running all 10 allied and enemy fetch lands, all 10 shock lands, City of Brass, Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, Fabled Passage, Mana Confluence, and Reflecting Pool, with three planes, three islands, and five forests. For those of you that have made it this far into the video, thanks for watching. The last thing that I want to talk about is a potential prismatic bridge package that you can include. None of these cards are in my deck, but could easily be swapped in or out if you wanted to put more cards in that focus on getting out the prismatic bridge side of Asika. These cards will focus on top deck manipulation, bouncing Asika to recast her other half, or triggering the bridge multiple times in one turn. I'm not going to dive deep into them, I'm just going to list them off for you. And they are Sensei's Divining Top, Scroll Rack, Sylvan Library, Honored Physician, Congregation at Dawn, Nico Eris, Paradox Haze, Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. This one's a little bit different. Um, basically, I plan to, if I were to include this card, I would have it enter the battlefield as a copy of Asika if I wanted to keep Asika's effect on the board, but then I could also return it with a card like Nico to my hand and then recast her as the Prismatic Bridge. Chulain Teller of Tales, Time Wipe, and Sphinx of the Second Sun. All right, you've made it to the end of the video. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. Be sure to check out and sign up for our Patreon at patreon.com slash commandvalley to support us directly, view exclusive content, join our Discord, receive tons of merch and sweet perks, and hang out with us, play commander with us, and all the great patrons that we have. Thanks again to Game Grid Lehigh for sponsoring our channel. You can click on the link to their website in the description to shop for all of your magic needs there, and you'll be supporting our channel as well. Lastly, you can find us on Twitter at CommandValleyP1 and on Facebook by clicking the link below. Thanks everyone, stay safe out there.